Welcome, beautiful listener, to Tune In Radio U podcast. I am your host, Ruth, and with me today, I have the amazing Caleb Manuel Bartlett. Caleb is an ex New Zealand Army soldier. Is it you call yourself soldiers? Yep. Yep. You can call us whatever. <laughs> awesome. All right, I will, mate. I'll, I'll the Queen's you. men. The Queen's <laughs> men. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what I do know of Caleb, which is not a lot, but I had a bit of a stalk and, uh, I know that you love to lift heavy things, which is cool because I do too. Um, you still a scaffolder? Uh, yep. Still in the construction. I'm a carpenter. I suppose sometimes scaff, but yeah. Yeah. Bit of both. And by the looks of your Insta as well, um, love to party. Oh, not really, not anymore. <laughs> I'd say I've been down that um, down that path a few years ago. I was um, traveling around, going to all the big parties, like Tomorrowland and that. Yeah, I saw I saw a couple of those Tomorrowland. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably a different person back then. Um, but yep. I guess I'll explain that yep. through the podcast here. Absolutely. Um, well, anyway, welcome, Caleb. Thank you so much for making the time and for being patient with me. I know that we've had a few uh time bumps but uh we're here now so it's all good so welcome okay so what would you say the best part of your life is right now mate what do you get to do yeah what do you get to do that you love to do the most now what am i most thankful for what i enjoy the most is it's kind of what you're getting at what do you what do you love to do that you're doing what do I love to do right now that I'm really interested by, like that makes me happy is working on my relationship with my, with my partner, you know, every day getting better, you know, like uh, we both on a bit on a good journey, uh, been a rough road the last couple of years, but um, this year has been really good because we're both sort of uh, confronted a lot of issues that we'd both run away from in our past years. And it's been unbelievable to see how change can, how your life can change when you change the way you look, you your perspective on life, and you change the way you view your experiences and stuff like that. So that's probably what I really enjoy at the moment in my life. Yeah. Uh, all the women out there just be like, oh, <laughs> so sweet. Uh, well, that I mean, that's beautiful to hear. It really is. Um, so what would you say the biggest hurdle was in your relationship? Um, I'm hoping you're you're willing to get open and vulnerable with me. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Uh, so from, from really from both our perspectives, we still hadn't healed from issues we'd been through years ago and probably with other people. And um, a lot of that stuff had been probably, you know, childhood stuff and also your connect the way we were conditioned through our experiences um, and it just led to a lot of um, you know I guess a lot of people can relate because a lot of people would go through the same things where they go through the same patterns and then you know they're making the same mistakes over and over again and things like that and um, that's yeah that's that's really what it was the biggest hurdle was realizing taking a step back and having a look at your life and realizing I've been in the situation before you know why does this keep happening to me and you know what what what's the common denominator here it's me so what can i do to address this as i don't want these results anymore mm-hmm. and uh but yeah so that was that's probably probably the hardest hurdle was to accept that but then also that's the first step you've got to take in becoming better is to accept you've got a problem yeah. so let's let's dive into maybe your childhood uh a little bit more uh if you know a lot of people i, I would like whoever's listening to maybe be able to relate to what you're saying. And I'm sure they probably already did by what you just said. But if we can get maybe a little bit more specific. So tell us about your childhood and maybe what you went through your childhood that has made you the man maybe previous to now before yep. you started, you know, delving into personal development. Um, so I grew up on a sheep and beef farm, uh, in New Zealand, there's a place called Gisborne, 
a lot of people will know where that is. Uh, it's north of that. It's a place called Viratoria. Oh, Tiki Tiki is what it's called. This is my family farm is up there. And um, so my, my mother, her family was really rough. Eh? Like they were, they were um, I guess it's just the way the people were brought up back in those days, like the, especially out in the rural areas. The children were expected to work from a young age and they were expected to conform to their parents' beliefs. And uh, that's pretty much how it was for me. Like for a really young age, my mum said to me, you're going up to live with your grandmother and that's where, like, that's what you're going to do. And um, I didn't realise this for a long time, but then it sort of it conditioned me to think I didn't have an option. I didn't have, um, I didn't have a choice in my life. So I repeated that pattern over and over again. So my mother said to me when I was 16, she said to me, um, you're joining the military. You're not coming to Australia with us. We're moving to Australia. Oof. And... Um, and then, so it was the same pattern again, you know, like I, I didn't, and I didn't realize that. I was just, you know, that's what I've been grow, brought up with. Grew up on the farm because of my mum told me to, you know, like I went backwards and forwards growing up every weekend to go and fulfill my responsibilities on the farm, go back to school because my mum said that's what, what I was, you know, that's what she wanted me to do. And then she was the one who wanted me to join the military. So I wouldn't have done that. So I was quite, that's what I, I ended up years later. Um, I looked back at my life and other other decisions I'd made was because I was still living in that uh, condition and that fear, thinking that I didn't have a choice to make a different cho- uh, make a different choice in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was probably that was a real that was a big event that now I look back on. I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it, that's really changed a lot of my life. What made me go down the road I went down and yeah. since discovering more about myself and what I really want to do and what makes fulfills me then that's uh because I realized I was living my mum's dreams my mum's passions by going that way and I always wondered why things were going weren't really finding any satisfaction I was but I wasn't finding that this is what I want to do um but yeah since since uh, working on myself for the last say like Really, properly, last eight months, but the last couple of years, I've really been looking in on the journey of self. But yeah, that's probably one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm sure people can definitely relate to that. The fact that, you know, parents say one thing and you have to do it right because you're a kid yep. and that is what you know, that is what you've been conditioned to doing. Um, so yeah, that, you know, and then it's only however later long in, in life, then you realize that you're an adult, you can actually do whatever the hell you want, really. Sure. Um, so what time, when, what uh, age, sorry, did you join the military? Uh, it was about two weeks after my 17th birthday. So I didn't finish my last year of high school. So my parents decided they wanted to move over to Australia my little brother was doing good at the footy at the footy at the time, and he'd signed a sort of development contract with the Cowboys, North Queensland Cowboys. So they really wanted to come over and support him with that, and um, which was cool. Uh, but yeah, it was, so I was real. Uh, my mother pretty much said to me, "No, you're not. You're not coming." And, and at that point, um, my older brother he would just come back from Afghanistan, so he was, you know, it was like a real cool thing to go do. And my um, my family's got a rich history of serving in the military. My grandparents both served in both wars, uh, both world wars. And my auntie, who was like kind of like a mother to, uh, mother figure to me, she had done a lot, uh, served in Somalia and East Timor and stuff like that. So I was like a cool path to go down that I really wanted to. I didn't want to go down there, but what I noticed later on was that I felt like I had to because someone else had made me do it, not because I'd made that choice. Yeah, for sure. So the military, hey, did you actually served? Yep. Where yeah, so you- I was in the, uh, so this was actually, I'll elaborate a little on this, but I went to, because I was, uh, I did my carpentry apprenticeship in the army with the mm-hmm. engineers. So I did four years in Palmerston North and I learned how to be a chippy. And then I went and did a couple tours overseas, just little ones to, I spent four months in Tonga, um, a couple months in, 
Vanuatu, and just little places like that, a couple of months in Samoa, stuff like that. Um, but all my family and all my cousins that I went to the military with, they went to uh, like Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like, you know, when you join the army, you don't join the army to go and um, to go and peacekeep or to go and like go visit the like the islands and stuff like that. Like, you That'd know, you go, nice, to, wouldn't it? Yeah, you like that's, you know, you go there to see like these these epic war movie, you know, like to these environments and stuff like that. And so for a very long time, I sort of punished myself for not having gone and done that. But looking back, like I'd, I'd done what I could. It's just I didn't have the opportunity to go to those places. Mm. And for a lot of time, I carried around a lot of a backpack of regret and not really regret, but just shame, I guess. And a shame for not having done what all my other cousins and family had done. But now I've accepted, I've realize that life's not all about just that yeah I didn't go that, get that opportunity but there's a lot of other opportunities I got in my life that I really appreciate that they were special mm. yeah. so was it did you actually see any um any action like in oh, the military or? the worst stuff I saw was just a lot of the um just a lot of the struggle that's going on in the uh, around Places that aren't even that far away from us, from Aussie, like, you know, countries pretty much like Papua New Guinea, you go, you go to a country like that and they're living like third world and, and they're not even that, that far away from us, you know, like I spent a lot of time in those countries where um, it's quite sad to see what, how women are treated and how it's, it's just, it's a culture thing over there, you know, how the woman does all the work and the man just lays around all day sort of thing and it was that, that was a sort of big shock for me, especially so young, seeing things like that and realising like we've got so much money and so much resources in this country, yet there's, you fly an hour to an island that's, and these people are living off um, out of the dirt. You know? So I was, uh, that was a real eye-opener. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what wow. my experience was there. Yeah. So what would you say now is your mission in life? Um, I just, I just want to be the best version of myself and find out about myself better, 1% better every day. Because then I know, you know, like be better 1% every single day, which means I'm going to be a better person for my family, for my friends and leave a, a legacy for my children. You know, like a change of, of um, confronting a lot of, Really, it's it's heal a lot of the problems that my fam, my mother passed down to me, or my my father passed down to me, and you know, like the biggest best gift I can give to the next generation for my family is to stop some of that bad conditioning that's come from them, and create new habits that are that are support them because that can grow, and you know, the next generation after that next generation doesn't have to suffer the pains that I suffered. Mm. Really, that's what I would do. Yeah. Beautiful. So if you haven't mentioned it already, like what would be the biggest um, conditioning or pattern of behavior that you have had to confront and deal with about yourself? Um, it, would, it would be, um, there's two. One would be the conditioning of feeling like I don't have a choice. And that was the conditioning I got as a child through my parents, which obviously they didn't know any better. They were just doing the best job that they knew. And it's interesting to see that they've um, acknowledged that now, you know, that they've, because I've spoken to my parents about how my life's gone and how, you know, it was because of this and that. And I don't blame them at all. I've said that to them, I blame them. And they're like, oh, yeah, we see that now. We're sorry. We didn't know any better. We will try to do better now. And then the other one would be, um, when I was a soldier, I felt like I was con- uh, consistently stressed because you sort of trained to deal with stress. And I guess a lot of the way they do this, they train you to be stressed and make decisions under stress. And I didn't really let go of that for so long. I just lived it sort of like just lived in a constant stress state. Um, and now that I, I've through self development and looking into myself, I've realised that uh, I've learnt that uh, humans are. Uh, probably the only being in this world that can create, recreate stress 
from a previous event or recreate stress in their mind and put themselves as if that was happening right now. So, like, you know, how it's explained to me, you know, like if a deer gets chased by a lion, once the lion, once the deer's away from that, that danger, it calms down, it goes back to eating or whatever it's doing. But, you know, like humans, you know, like things that could be little things, just like losing your job and stuff like that, you know, you lose it once and then you're for it, like you're stressing out about it and it's not even going to happen. Mm. So, I think can, uh, those two being conditioned to be consistently constantly stressed and um, feeling like I didn't have a choice. Those would be the two uh, changes that I've been able to make through self-development, through mm. seeking mentorship from people who are doing uh, the things that I want to do, going down the path that I want to go down, getting changing my environment, associating with people that I want to be like. That's been those two probably the biggest ones. Yeah, it's, uh, it goes to show how powerful uh, the human mind really is because if we can yep. do that and do that so well and so effectively to just be able to recreate a stressful situation so that we yep. are constantly playing it over and over and so that we're constantly in that stress state, imagine, because people don't know they don't even, sometimes they don't even realize that they're constantly yeah. stressed. It's their normal, right? And you probably felt that way for quite a while as well. You probably didn't yeah. even realize you were constantly stressed out, I imagine. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's the education, I think, is absolutely necessary to get it out there to, to let people know that. Well, imagine, imagine if someone if someone was always thinking negatively and always getting bad results, imagine if they change that to getting mm. positively, you know, like people think the law of attraction is stupid or, but really the people I know who think like that, they aren't living stupid lives. They aren't living repetitive, bad lives, you know? So. And, and it's really that simple, man. You've just, yeah. you know, hit the nail on the head so beautifully. Like, you know, you don't have to over explain it. It's literally like people that are thinking positively, positively in their lives yeah. constantly have positive things that happen to them in their lives and yeah. vice versa, you know, like it's really that simple. Um, and just beautifully said, thanks, man. And, you know, something else I wanted to say was I, I love that your parents, that you talk to your parents about, you know, your past with them and they were so open and uh, obviously so wonderful about, um, you know, you talking to them about that. Yep. Stuff. That's really cool. So what, what was it exactly? What was that moment in your life where you thought, fuck, I got to do something about this. Um, so really, really it was me and my partner. We had a, like I was talking earlier before, we'd been through so much drama and problems. But I looked at it and I said, I've been through this situation before. And um, it was the exact same situation happened. So I'm 30. Oh, so it happened when I was 29. But um, I'd remembered this exact same situation when I was 21. And I remembered people telling me back then, you know, you're young. Don't worry about it. It's all good. You know, you just you got the world to see, you know, it's just don't worry about it. And then I remember sitting there going, I've made that same mistake again and again. And I look back and I made it a couple of other times. And I was just like, something's got to change. And I looked at it and I was like, what's, you know, what's the con constant, consistent factor here? And I was like, it's me. So I'm like, when I've always, you know, looked at like, what, who was it? This person was it? That person was it? Doing that, was doing that. And I was like, it's me, you know, like, and I'd, real, I'd done a bit of work on myself a couple of years ago and it got really good results. But then I just thought, I felt like I got to this level. I don't need to worry about it anymore. I can just clock off, you know, like I'm up here now. And then once I started getting into uh, learning about how the world, you know, like these, these different quantum fields and, you know, the vibrations of the world and all that, I realized, you know, like I'd got to this level and then, Got all these amazing results financially. Uh, not, yeah, relationship-wise, it's definitely a great financial position at that time. Um, 
and then I just clocked off and then and then when I was looking back I was like that's the problem as well I got I was working on myself but I just stopped and then um so that's when I decided this is now you know this is rock bottom again we're gonna clear it all off there's no better place to start than right at the bottom this is a solid foundation and then I just decided you know like uh whatever whatever comes it's it's we're not going to stop this time, you know, because every day success is, is like all these silly, like they might seem like silly little motivational quotes, but they're right, you know, success isn't owned, it's rented and you've got the rent due every day, things like that. And I just realized, you know, like that's me doing things for myself with good habits, with good association. That was what was getting me the results I wanted. It wasn't that I'd got to this level and I can stay there. It's you have to keep working at it every day. And that was the point where I was like, I needed I need to change relation. Because I was you know, I was 21 dealing with this problem. And then I'm 30. I was turning 30 in a couple months and I was like, fuck, you know, like have you grown up? Like, so that was pretty much that that was it in a nutshell. Do you think you've grown up now? Um I think so, in some ways. I hope so. No, uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I try to keep a bit of youthful exuberance in some ways, but uh, yeah, I definitely feel a lot more wiser with um, the road I've been going down the last uh, eight months. It's yeah. been great. Beautiful. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for both of you. <coughs> really cool. Really cool. Uh, what do you think is going on in the world right now, mate? Um, I think it's a uh, it's a sad reality, but uh, a lot of it is the world. These people really putting everyone in a state of stress, mm. which is you know like I uh, watch sort of how my parents were when COVID first come around, and my parents were you know like that. They were putting themselves in a place, in a situation to be sick because they're so, you know, stressed about, oh, what if I touch this and what if I do that? And, you know, like that's that exact uh, situation I described before where they're starting to create havoc in their lives and they're going to start welcoming it in. And I think, um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, like if even if you read between the lines and you do read the Bible and things like that and, you get it, uh, you read a lot of religious stuff, or if you're not even just religious stuff, like a lot of that, it's unfortunate. You know, like even the books from Napoleon Hill, who is someone I really admire, even though he's you know, passed away probably a good 40 years ago. If you read a book called um, Interview with the Devil, like he, a lot of the stuff is what's happening was, predict, was predicted. You know, it's quite, and I just think, yeah, it's, it's the world is. Unfortunately, they're trying to stress us out. And, you know, like if you if they control the way you think, well, they're going to start controlling your actions and what you're doing and how your quality of life. To what end do you think? Why do you think they're doing that? Greed, money, power. The three just, big ones, right? <laughs> it's just, you know, like that's... that's um, can't remember what it was it's it's i know um, money like money itself is not a sin but the power of like the, the lust for money and the the um pursuit oh not really the pursuit but the i think it's probably just the lust of it like that's they want that power that's that does that make sense yeah it absolutely yeah. does yeah, yeah. Um, because you know they don't have enough money already, right? That's like someone who, yeah, like it's just a never-ending pit. You know, you'll never be happy. Yeah. And it's, um, it's unfortunate, it's, yeah. It's kind of crazy. You know, when I really think about it, I'm like, I, I feel a little bit sorry for them as well, you know, because that they, they, yeah, that's, that that they, they, don't, they don't know any better. They, they think that this is what makes them happy, the pursuit of power to have control over everything and everyone. Like, is that, does that make them happy? I doubt that they're happy at all. You know? That's right. Yeah. So um, it is a sad, it is a sad uh, 
that's what I think of it anyway. I don't. I try, I try to not to let that stuff. What's what's going on in the outside world really affect me? But obviously, you know, you know like we do live in the world, we have to be realize what's going on. Um, but that's how I see it. I definitely see a lot, you know, a lot of it. It's just money, it's power, it's control. It's what it's always been, you know, like we had thousands of years ago, Alexander the Great tried to con- conquer the world, you know, things like that. There's always a pursuit of someone wanting to outdo someone else. Mm-hmm. So that's just yeah. how I look at it. Yeah. For the moment, and, that, that is what happens, yes. And it's interesting, like it's, you know, when I was a kid, I really admired someone like Julius Caesar. And I used to read a lot of history when I was younger. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, like I never really wonder what it'd be like to just conquer all these lands, conquer all of France, <laughs> Spain, uh, Africa and stuff like that. And when, when I got a bit older, I started looking into it, you know, like and seeing that a lot of these, you know, like he was saying a lot of people are terrorists and stuff like that and and uh, this is this person's this and that, but then they were just fighting for their homes, you know, their lands and stuff like that. And it's actually, you know, an experience. So when I was a few years ago, I, um, I was still very in a really external person. Um, I wanted to, because I obviously grew up a, in a, with a Christian background, um, but I really wanted to find out for myself if I wanted, if I believed in that. So I actually, I went over to Jerusalem, uh, traveled around Israel for about six weeks. I went everywhere over there. So I went to where Christ was, uh, where he was crucified, where he was, where he born, where he was born. I went to Jericho, Bethlehem, uh, River Jordan, and just really experienced all those places. And what I, the biggest lesson I got over there is just how, um, how sad people are and how they treat each other just because of beliefs. So it was unreal. You know, like I was in, if anyone's been to Jerusalem, you know, like uh, it's split up into four quarters. There's a uh, Christian quarter, there's an Armenian quarter, uh, there's a Jewish quarter, and there's, I think there's a Muslim quarter, that's how it is. Um, and I remember just walking through the Jewish part and it was like the flashiest city I'd ever been to. You know, it was unbelievable. The streets were all lit up. It was there's not rubbish anywhere. Everyone's walking around happy and smiles. Then I walked over to the Muslim, which was pretty much just across the street, and it was just it was unbelievable. There's rubbish everywhere. There's cats and you know cats and dogs all over the place. People sleeping on the ground, and it was just sad to see how someone was treated because they believe this belief, and then someone was treated completely different because they believe this faith. Mm. And that, that was a big like that was one of the biggest lessons I got from my traveling days was going over there and seeing that firsthand. Having gone, having gone over there to see, you know, to find faith, going over there and just finding how how we how sad it was that we treated each other like that because of different beliefs or skin, skin color. So, what did you find instead, apart from? Oh, what I did find is that, like a lot of I've read the Bible, I need to read the Bible more. I'd have read it a couple of times, and and my one of my uncles is a. He's a preacher and he's very religious and you know, I can really do seek a lot of uh, guidance from him and what he, and his, what he believes in. And he always used to tell me, you know, it's, it's um, Christ is within you. It's how you are as a person. It's not all this external, whether you go and do this and you go and do that and or you're you know, wearing these clothes or you're paying this amount of money. It's, you know, like it's, your, it's a test of your character. It's a test of the person you are within and um and that's what i found like i went to all these holy places and where christ was but then i came back and felt closer to faith being home with the people who were doing that who were already practicing the right way in my eyes so i went over there and found i went over there to those places but i found that it's within you and that's why i mean like whether whether you're religious whether you believe in whatever shamanism all that sort of stuff they all teach the same thing. It's within you, you know, it's how you are. Same with uh, Muslim faith, you know, like it's the book, you know, like stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and worry about yourself. Mm. You know, make sure you're being a good person. So that's what I picked up from that trip anyway. 
Because the reason I went out to all these countries was because I was real external trying to find happiness. Okay, if I go to that country, you know, if I go to this concert, will I be, you know, like, oh, I have all these beautiful photos. And if I get that tattoo, oh, you know, like I'll be like those people smiling on Instagram. But really, it's like, you know, I got it and I was like, oh, far out. It's not a sore arm now. <laughs> it's fairly better. Oh, and like I've been to this concert, you know, like now I'm just going to have to go spend the next three weeks in bed because I've spent the next, you know, the whole time up on drugs. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Uh, Great yeah. experiences though. Yeah. Oh, mate. No regrets, right? You learn something from everything you experience. That's right, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I have to agree with religion. Um, I I personally grew up in a, a very religious house. Uh, my parents were very religious and I went as soon as I could. I pretty much, I got kicked out of the church, but I ran the opposite direction and I yep. hated anything to do with religion. Uh, if it was religious, I was like, get out of my face kind of thing. Like, but it was only up until recently when I realized that religion, it's not necessarily the religion that's bad. It's, it's the people that kind of, there's certain people in certain religions that will kind of just teach whatever the hell they want to teach and, you yep. know, um, instill their own personal beliefs instead of, you know, the core foundation of what is for example in the bible or the quran or that's right yeah. whatever it is you know like um so i'm i'm a lot more open to the to the bible and stuff again which is really interesting like i'm i'm looking at that stuff and i'm looking at the bible with a fresh set of eyes yeah, it's yeah. Really, really interesting and it's really cool because it does have some beautiful stories and some beautiful messages in there so um yeah which I'm glad I've done a 180 personally. Yeah. So. Well, that's how I look at a lot of all of that stuff is, um, you know, whether it is the Bible, the Quran, whether the Old Testament, the New Testament, it's the core it seems to always be the same. Whether, you know, the, the religions have obviously had battles and things like that during the years, but I believe it wasn't the core that was different. It was just these people's motives that were different, you know, but a lot of the core beliefs of, every faith is pretty much the same mm. obviously yeah, through years and stuff like that things have changed um, for sure yeah. for sure but yeah it always comes down to that power and greed um yeah and, and control and when humans are involved that that inevitably comes out somewhere so um but yeah so okay if say there's someone listening right now that has been through maybe what you've similar situation that you've been through. Right. And they're just kind of starting to look at life a little bit differently and go, Hmm, maybe I want to do something about my current situation. Like what would be the thing that you would maybe advise like your, the best advice that you would have given yourself a few years ago. Um, like if you, if you really don't like what, what's happening in your life, you don't like the results you're getting, well then think about, you know, like what are you doing to get those results? And if you don't like that, the person that's doing that, you need to start thinking about ways you can or something ways like really need to change your mindset first. You know, you've got to change from a, a scarcity, whether it's financial situation, whether you're, you know, you want to change. They're both pretty much the same, but you have to change from being so scarce and scared to wanting to be of growth and wanting to be of learning or knowledge. Not whether it's knowledge you want, whether it's financial freedom you want. I think you need to be willing to make that change in your mind. But I think the first thing you got to do is, you know, if you're not happy with where your life's going, then you really need to make a choice to be better, to be, you know, to take a stand and, and make change. You know, you get one life and do you want to be, you want to keep carrying on this way or do you want to be different? And then if you decide that's, I think that's really the decision you have to make. You have to make that choice first because you can have all the mentors around you and all the resources to grow and the right people and all that. But if you're not willing to listen or you're not willing to follow that path, you won't, uh, 
you won't go down that path. I think, yeah, anyone who's, who's, who's realised that their life isn't where they want to be, I think the first thing is to go and look, find people who are doing the things you want to do and start getting around them and find, find a mentor that you really connect with. And who knows, like, to start out, it might just be the rock on TV or something like that, but, you know, you got to start looking, what's he doing that's getting him where he wants to be, you know, like, what am I doing? Oh, maybe I should stop doing that. Maybe I should start spending more time with this person and these types of people. Mm. But I think, I think, yeah, the big thing is it's got to, it's got to change. You got to have a reason to change first. You got to have a deep desire, a want to be different, and that's really got to come from you first. But then, when people make that decision, that's when you can start looking to to find the right people to be around for you. You know, whether it's the financial freedom you want or the spiritual freedom or spiritual enlightenment, um, everyone's journey is different mm. and everyone, what relates to everyone will be different. So that's what I would do first. Yeah. So I tell myself, oh, I'll put it this now. I'll go, I'd sit down for myself and say, do you really want to do this for the next 20 years of your life? Waste the next 20 of your life, 20 years of your life doing this, or do you want to try something different? You've been down this road before. How about you take this road you've never taken before? And it might be scary and you might not know, but you, now you've, you've been down the road before that you already know, you know where that goes. How about you take a, take a leap of faith down this road? Beautiful. That's why, yeah. Yeah, I love that, man. That's, that's spot on, spot on. And I think your environment is huge when, and when you, I feel like when people make that decision, things start to kind of inevitably, you start attracting yeah. different things and different people anyway. So yeah. that's kind of cool. That's really cool. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. The change in your mind needs to be first. And then those, once you've made that decision, those people, those resources, those environments, those opportunities are going to come to you. And that's going to be, once again, it's going to be your choice, your decision to actually take those opportunities. So it all comes down to doing what's right for you and making the decision for yourself, yeah. not for anyone else, not for, not even for your kids. A lot of people say these days, I'm doing this for my kids. You know, I'm doing this for this. You need to really do it for you first. And then your, your children will reap the benefit of having the greatest parent, the best parent, you know, the best provider, the best mentor, the best example. And I think, um, yeah, I think a lot of people say things like that and they really restrict themselves. Mm, that's so true. Yeah. You first lead by example and then yeah. the rest will follow or those who are meant to be with you will follow anyway. Yeah. Caleb, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry I kept you from your dinner for so long. Oh, it's all right. Well, it's all right. Hopefully, um, hopefully someone out there is using that information to better their lives. And, yeah, hopefully. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. It's going to touch at least one person, Caleb. And one person is enough. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Thanks again, mate. I really appreciate your good. time. And I will see you in the interwebs, hey? <laughs> Thanks.